On the eve of the Anambra elections, the gubernatorial candidates sign a peace accord and IPOB makes a U-turn and cancels a sit-at-home order. And also, Governor Babajide Songwulu inaugurates a six-member panel to investigate the cause of the Ikoyi building collapse. This is Plus Politics, and I am Osaogi Ogbonwa. Welcome once again to PLOS Politics on PLOS TV Africa. Candidates of the Anambra governorship election have signed a peace accord. Chairman of the National Peace Committee, General Abdul Salami Abubakar, called on candidates and political parties to abide by the letters of the peace accord to ensure a free, fair and credible election in the state. He urged that aggrieved parties should not resort to violence but follow the judicial process. And in a surprising turn of events, the leadership of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, said it has cancelled its planned one-week sit at home across uh, the southeast. Joining us to discuss this is Ladipo Johnson, a legal practitioner, and Ms. Alex Ogbonna, the National Publicity Secretary, Arnez Ndigbo. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Good evening. Thank you. Great to yeah, have you. Thank you for Arnez Ndigbo. All right. So I, I want to start, you know, and I think both, would, both of you would have to answer this. I'll start with Mr. Ogbonna. Um, do you, what are your thoughts on the idea of having to sign a peace accord for something that should be as simple as an election? Well, uh, this part of the world, our own brand of democracy, the fact that that accord has to be signed. Because sometimes people are put the politics uh, with crude um, uh, mind. And because of that, you have some elements of violence associating with the election. So it becomes necessary that the um, peace, uh, peace uh, uh, accord had to be signed. So it's in order. Okay. And, and Mr. Johnson, do you agree? Do you think that this is simply just... Uh, because of the you know the type of elections that we run here in Nigeria, or would you say that this is a failure um, of Nigeria's system to you know to punish um, offenders? Well, um, it's a bit of both. <clears throat> We've um, since um, 1979. Um, what have we learned? We understand. Um, if at this stage we have to be signing a peace accord before an election, then um, it is a shame. It shows that um, we really have not learned a lot. We have failed or we are regressing. Um, we haven't made the progress we should have made. Um, at the same time, as uh, Mr. Obonia said, our Chief Obonia said, um, it is reflective of the times. Um, we cannot bury our heads in the sand and say that we do not know the um, situation in the in the country as a whole, and especially what has been happening in Anambra regarding um, uh, violent events and what have you. So it's a good, it's a step in the right direction. Whether I mean that would um, keep the foot soldiers, as it were. Um, civil after the results or during the elections is left to be seen. It's good that the candidates themselves and the parties have um, adopted that, but I hope that it spreads down to the followers and supporters. Well, um, Chief Ogbonna, would you also have suggested or thought that maybe, uh, you know, a particular group who aren't necessarily contesting in the elections should have been part of the peace accord, and I'm talking about the IPOB now, who have called off their uh, sit-at-home order. Should, should they maybe have been brought into this peace accord discussion? Yeah, um, the way the kind of politics we play here, we have um, the leadership of every political party is expected to be in charge, and it's always at the 
by the structure of the political party, the leadership will now give instruction to the followers. So you know, I think the accord the sign among the leadership, especially the contestants, so that they will now talk to the leadership of their various parties, and the leadership of various parties will now, to now um, go down to the grassroots. Uh, it is difficult also to organize the, uh, all the followers the grassroots all together in the accord. So I think the appropriate thing for leadership to key into the uh, elements and the spirit of the accord and then find a way to make sure that it goes down to the grassroots for them to key into that uh, accord. So that's it. Evidently, if any person who are who have sub Nigerian politics will always know that sometimes they go to eat with this pressure. Uh, do or die, do or die. And because of that do or die, there's this pressure for people fight in trying to secure votes. So um, it's important that the peace accord was signed. Thank you. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm going to stick yeah, uh, with you. May um, I? Oh, oh, Mr. Johnson, go ahead. I think you want to share something. Yes, may I just say that um, from what you actually said, um, it's difficult to... It would have been difficult to have included the IPOP in the arrangements, um, which um, is what you're referring to, I believe, because um, it's a proscribed group. If you have termed a group um, that they're terrorists or what have you, then it's difficult to sit down and discuss with them. But if that hadn't been done, it would have been a good opportunity to have brought them to the table. But then, I think, having called off the sit at home, um, they they are actually thinking the way they should do. But um, it's it would have been difficult to have called them to the round table because they are not recognized by government. Well, I'm, I'm going to come back to you on that, but I want to go back to Chief Ogbona now on IPOB. Uh, like um, Mr. Johnson has said, they're a proscribed group, but even as a proscribed group, I'm sure that we can all tell or can, or can all see that they have a really loud voice in the Southeast, maybe even louder than the voice of the political and traditional leadership in the Southeast. Um, so, Mr. Agbona, what, what are your thoughts concerning they deciding to call off the sit-at-home order? Um, they have also been criticized because this seems to happen every time that there is a major election coming in the southeast. They declare it at home. They say, oh, you know, everyone should boycott the elections. And then a couple of days to the election, they call that off. Yeah, any person who have been following Ohanese will realize that um, Ohanese have been opposed to all this kind of boycotting elections, sit at home and things like that. And as they have often shown um, uh, concern over this, because uh, it is not the way, not the, or another conduct that is not the better approach to some of the problems we have in the Southeast. Uh, four years ago, uh, the uh, um, IPOP also came with a threat that there wouldn't be any election. We persuaded them, we had a, we had, it was a prolonged one, eventually they had to key in. This time around, um, almost a day to the time, they also cancelled the sit at home. So you are very correct in what you are saying. Um, the important thing is that they have cancelled it. But I also want to let you know that when you talk about IPOP of now, um, apart from the leadership of the IPOP, most young, most young Gibbos seem to of, um, support what they are doing. So it is really difficult to say these are the members of IPOP. I know who are not members of IPOP. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. I hope you are following. Yes. yes so the, apart from the leader, most Igbos, most Igbo boys or Igbo youth, look at IPOP now as a savior. Because it's like agitation that is very common in the whole Southeast Nigeria. The agitation that is common here, they look at them as being excluded from the government. They look at them as being marginalized and they are alienated. They look at themselves, uh, when you think about number of states, number of local government areas, amenities, roads, road infrastructure, of job opportunities, a lot of other things. So, and when compared to what is happening in some other zones, they'll, 
they get frustrated. It is that frustration that is now uh, they try to agitate against it. And that agitation is manifest, uh, manifestly um, gaining weight and momentum because of reality on ground. Uh, so any person who is in form of a depressed, uh, form of depressed in a way, uh, losing by way of uh, not get uh, on unemployment and other forms of uh, alienations and deprivations, all of them are key into the momentum of IPOM. So it is now difficult to say these ones are members of IPOP and these ones are not members of IPOP. One can now classify the society in the southeast as two, the elite on one side and also the masses on the other. The masses this time now, those who are unemployed, those who youth, who feel sidelined, who have one kind of problem or the other, and who feel that the only way to gain um, attention is to express the appellants and to agitate. It is to that extent, you know, you classify them as the uh, one or group on the other side. That group of masses now will give support to it because of the reality of their condition. I hope you understand. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I get your point, um, but you know, I, I wanna, I'm trying to focus now, on the idea behind declaring an election boycott, declaring a seat at home, and then calling it off 24 or 48 hours before the election. It's happened over and over and over. And this has continued to lead to voter suppression in the Southeast. And, of course, I've started to see people who say that the IPOB might be working hand-in-hand -hand with certain groups uh, to create that you know, voter suppression and, of course, then give the election to a particular group. Yeah, um, like I tried to, I support what you, I understand what you said, and I cited four years ago when uh, Obiano was to go for a second term. It happened, this time again it happened. Uh, I don't really think um, there is a machination for one part or for a particular political, political party. I don't want to believe that. I only believe that uh, they say it because of the reality on ground and uh, because of the pressure that often come, they cancel. But unfortunately, they cancelled this their sister at home so late in time that people have already uh, um, made up their mind on the seat at home. Secondly, each time Apple made pronouncement like uh, cancelling seat at home, you see some if you see some other elements through the Afra group and they're going about to implement it. So people who are sitting at home now, it's not that they are in support of sit at home, but they fear fear and trepidation. Uh, because sometimes uh, the security or preferred the security operatives, they are not in great number to protect their, to protect them. So most of them to be on the safe side, they just stay indoor. Not because they like to stay indoor. Like if you go to the market, all the rural women that sell uh, uh, um, tomato, pepe, green vegetable, and so on, uh, they are encountering waste of all kinds. They are not happy they are encountering the waste. But then the fear is that if they come to market today, they may be, uh, they may have some other actors, non-state actors, that will destabilize them. And of course, they, they will encounter greater waste. So because of that, they are sitting at home. The at home is not in compliance with IPOB uh, instruction. But in, uh, I try to be on the safe side. So that is what you find here. All right. Um, Ladipo Johnson, let's bring you in on you know, the same um, uh, question. Um, would you agree with those who say that the IPOB may be <coughs> working um, on the background with certain political parties in order to achieve voter suppression and you know, able to you know, push the, ele the election victory their way? Well, you could, um, you could understand that, actually, uh, because really it makes no sense um, if you're fighting um, you're a group fronting and fighting for the emancipation in quotes of your people you um, would not do that four years ago and do that again um, uh, four years after calling it off just the day before you leave room and you begin to lose credibility amongst the people who, who are following you. 
So um, I I begin to wonder why they would do that um, because surely, surely, they must have known that um, they would call the sit at home during elections off. Um, I don't think it's um, because some people have gone to talk to them that, uh, or, uh, as Chief said, maybe put pressure on them because um, they've known this and it's happened before. If it hadn't happened before, then I'd say, okay, yes, maybe Chief is right. Maybe pressure was put on them um, by people trying to negotiate for the elections to go on. But bottom line is that when people look up to a group or up to a person for leadership um, to lead them out of what they feel is a disadvantageous position, they begin to lose interest and um, they begin to doubt the credibility of that group when things like this happen. So um, as Chief said, I'd say I'm not sure, I'm not certain that they're actually in cahoots with um, any political party or political pressure group. But I would say that um, it is easy to believe that because of the actions they've taken. Yeah, and of course, uh, the sit at home have also not been able to uh, convince anyone to release their leader, and that's also not very likely to happen. Um, but I, I, I want your, your, your thoughts on um, the IPOB instead playing things out you know, in the other direction, and that is convincing their members, convincing people of the Southeast to get registered for the election, get their PVCs, and vote a candidate that they think would be um, would would um, you know be better for them and for the southeast. So, Mr. Johnson, exactly. do you think that should be the message the IPOB should be that, be be preaching? Exactly, that ought to have been their message. That should still be their message going heading towards twenty twenty three. Because if you are saying that. You want the country to let you go, as it were, or maybe some are saying that you want a referendum or what have you. Your work becomes a hundred times easier if, say, you have some three of the state governors, members of the state's houses of assembly, the speakers or whatever, what have you, who are your sympathizers or your members. So one would have thought they'd be working the other way around, that with this popularity, yes, we don't want to go into politics, but we want to influence things so that we can get our people in the position we want them to be in so that we can make the move we want to do, make. But um, I think they, they've gone the other way, but maybe they will listen to you and... Um, uh, begin to work towards 23, 2023 and make sure that they get the people of the East, you know. I'm not saying I want them to succeed. The, I'm a Yoruba man. The Igbos are my brothers and sisters. We want um, them to still remain, but in a fairer, more equitable Nigeria that works for everyone and not just for a few. All right. Um, Chief Ogbonna, since we're not sure who the IPOB will listen to, um, I'm not sure if they would listen to Anez Indigbo or the rest of the traditional leadership in the Southeast um, to set up a conversation where they are convinced to instead um, convince their followers and people of the Southeast to get involved with the electoral process and increase the numbers of people who get registered and thereby putting candidates in office that would work in, in their favor. Um, Chief Ogbonna, do you think that that's what Ohanez Indigo should be telling the IPOB at this point? Yes. This played out uh, four years ago when Chief Nyamudo was the president general of Ohanez Indigo. We, when they said there wouldn't be an election in the Anambra say four years ago, we urged them, we advised them that they better would look into the array of the contestants or the candidates and then support one of them who they would believe who they believed would carry the IPOB consciousness for them 
And from there, they will begin to grow uh, in weight and in support. And with time, they gain more support and perhaps actualize their, what they are looking for. So we have told them that much before. But you can see, like what I told you, when you talk about IPOP, we have two kinds of people in the Southeast. It is important that you should note it. One, they, I call the elite now, and the other one, the masses. And when you come to the masses now, those who are unemployed, those who are having one kind of uh, thought process or the other, you know, those who feel entirely marginalized, the youth, because of reality on ground. So you see, for our public leadership is playing on the sentiments or the reality on ground as with respect to um, all infrastructure. So the masses are now on the side of the airport. They the elites, those who perhaps are in government, those who perhaps are experienced, those who perhaps will see beauty of the vastness of Nigeria, the diverse nature of Nigeria, and the wider opportunity Nigeria provides for everybody. Like myself, I lived in Kano, I lived in Lagos. And, you know, personally, I know that Igbo ingenuity can better be expressed in larger Nigeria. We continue to tell them that it is better that we stay in a restructured Nigeria where uh, we find equity will be the major uh, proposal and the major uh, part of the discussion and engagement in the relationship. No, so, but some of them who have done, who haven't got this experience, like some of us, it's difficult for them to understand it. So I think the as much as we continue to urge them to understand from the viewpoint of the advantages Nigeria provides, so is it's discovered uh, it's that um, that have been the point for the, for the elite, the leadership to convince them to understand the very benefits the uh, larger Nigeria provides. It has been a problem because of the reality on ground. That is why we felt that this requires a political solution, that requires dialogue, a kind of diplomacy. For instance, assume that in omitting the presidency, the president is okay, uh, one more minister for you, one more uh, state for you, one more this and that and that. And people, there will be jubilation galore. And it will, it will still have basis, it will be, now we begin to have basis of convincing some others that things are beginning to change shape. And based on that, you know, the followership of the elite will be more. But so long as everybody it appears as if uh, there's a, a conspiracy for marginalization, marginalization or conspiracy for alienation and things like that, it becomes difficult to manage the youth. So that is really a problem. And also what accentuated the whole problem was the policy of exclusion and the policy of uh, nepotism, where at a point it appeared that uh, most uh, positions in government uh, will always go to one ethnic group, which is wrong. And as I have condemned this several times, we appeal to the presidency to change the attitude that that one is not the best for diverse nature and character of Nigeria. For example, if you look at the service chiefs in Nigeria today, we have about 14 of them. None is, Igbo is not considered uh, good enough for any one of them. In fact, every other area of life, of uh, polity, you discover that somehow the minority is very clear. So these are the things, the oh. rules are dead trap. These are things that make it difficult for us to convince the youth. But if we see the presence and we enter into a dialogue and he says, okay, um, look at the way it is, now there should be equity, there oh, should, Nigeria right, should we begin to ba balance issues, then people will begin to jubilate and it will be easier for us to convince the youth to join us in our crusade for one Nigeria. Oh, well, um, I, I'm not sure <laughs> if that, that is exactly the way it will play out, but um, let's uh, wrap up with uh, Ladipo Johnson. Um, your final thoughts, if you can share with us in less than a minute. Um, how disappointing will you be, or, or how disappointed rather will you be, Mr. Johnson, uh, seeing electoral figures or voting figures tomorrow uh, looking very, very, very poor? Um, would it break your heart, or would you, of course, see it as expected? Um, with what has happened, um, it is to be expected. If the turnout is good, then um, we will be pleased that um, people came out to vote um, to decide their futures. Um, but unfortunately, I think that, um, as um, Chief Obona said earlier, you may find that... Um, 
some other renegade groups would take advantage of the fact that IPOP had said there should have there should be a seat at home and still try to cause havoc and mayhem in some instances. But um, the security infrastructure is quite robust. So I pray that it does, um, that the elections go well tomorrow. And I pray that the people of the state will come out and um, vote for a person of their choice to lead them in the next four years. Dariqua Johnson, thank you so much for your time this evening. Always interested in speaking with you. And also the yeah. National Publicity Secretary, Johannes Ndigbo, Chief uh, Alex Ogbonna. Thank you also for uh, your time this evening and for this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. And thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break. And when we come back, Governor Songwolu takes a step to investigate the cause of the collapsed Ikoi building. We'll be right back.